and welcome to tonight's GTA Live meeting for September. Um, before we begin, I would like to make a couple of announcements. Uh, our October meeting is coming up with Mike Hoy, and he's going to be presenting the state of Mozilla. Um, in November after that, we have a Docker talk coming up with Greg, are you here? Greg, you're not here with Greg. Um, in December, we're going to be doing a roundtable discussion, open discussion kind of about what, what we're all doing in Linux and open source. And um, so, one thing that should be said is October is our general meeting. So we'll have our regular meeting where Mike Hoy will present for the first half of it. And then the last half we'll be discussing the GTA Lug organization, doing board elections, all that fun stuff at the end. So if you're normally the type that skips the first half of the, of the meeting, and then it comes to the last half because you want to miss that part, Make sure you come at the first half and end at the last half. Um, also, um, we have membership options available, which are $20? $20 a membership. $20. Pardon? We don't really have very many options. Oh. Is the corporate one $500? So, so if you want to give us five hundred dollars, we'll more than likely accept it. Um, so, for those of you who are staying, we have our brand new membership site. Yeah. So um, the the membership offer support to GTA Lug. Largely so that we can keep the mailing list server up and operational, which is a quite hefty fee in nowadays time because of mailing list decline and all that fun stuff. Um, yeah, so I think our only major expense is our Linode server, which is $119 annually, and that's where most of that money goes to. Um, yeah. Um, I'll wait for uh, <laughs> um, other things. Um, PyCon Canada tickets are going to be going on sale this week. Uh, we first have to figure out how Quebec custom, how Quebec taxes work. So if you're interested in coming to PyCon Canada in Montreal, come on buy a ticket. We'll hopefully figure out how Quebec taxes work soon. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. We we don't know anything. No one tells us things. <laughs> we should call a government agency and say like, should we tax people? And get a response, yes, you should be taxed. You know. <laughs> yeah. Well. <laughs> Yeah. Quebec, very. Yeah. Yeah. And the problem too is our organization is is in Toronto, like Pine North, our governing body is in Toronto. So where do we pay tax? Do we pay tax in Quebec or Ontario? And every other province has this solved. Like, <laughs> no, except for Quebec. <laughs> but anyways, this is enough of an Anglo campaigning about Quebec. Are you ready, Chris? Sure. All right. Tonight's talk is Chris talking about X terms, and then me talking about web scraping. I'm just going to grab my deck. I can change a few instances of red to blue because, whoops. Red to that blue because apparently that's... Uh, Apparently that's not showing very well. Okay, let's let me try that again. Well, that's a little more. You know, yeah. So, well, the, my topic for my portion of this evening. Oh. My topic for my portion of the evening is talking about X terms and uh, modern X term developments. So, I think a large 
portion of the people in this room probably have spent quite a bit of time working in X terms and or consoles. And you may even still use X term. In fact, that's not entirely, a, that's not a terrible idea as I will quickly touch on. But it is 2017 and X term was written back at the beginning of the days of that X existed. It used to be one of the, X term was one of the first clients. So, well, I, I, I saw some interesting things and figured it was worth, worth at least quickly talking about, well, what's, what's new? There's some stuff that's probably not worth using seriously. And some of them are kind of fun. People have been continually writing alternative terminal software pretty much continuously. Every time a new um, graphical framework comes out, hooray, there's QT, let's write another X term uh, clone. Hooray, there's GTK, let's write another X term clone. It actually has accelerated in some ways recently because there's some libraries specifically to accelerate this, which is sort of weird. Um, but let's see, the topics, well, let's see, there's the, old, these, there's the old traditional ones that we know and love. There's ones that offer, hmm? Further, further, further. Okay, we have ones with cool special effects. We have some that are like super functional and they probably chew up quite a bit of memory. Then there's somewhere the question will be, is that graphical enough for you? Are you sure? Are you sure? Wait, we've got more. And then there's, there's some that just make you go, what? And the, the, there's a last thing that's maybe the most interesting as far as I'm concerned is, wow, it's fast, man. Um, and as the computer's over here, you may want to tilt a few degrees. So X term is the old classic. Am I further? Further? Good. It used to be part of X386 until around 2006, which seems to be consistent with when the X386 project sort of imploded and people headed out to the X, X org project. Well, they had some commonality for a while, but basically people started jumping ship from X386. And this has rolled into, under the development efforts of Thomas Dickey, I think is his name. And the home of X term today is invisibleisland.net. And it still sees half a dozen patches a year. These days it's mostly about supporting Unicode and rectifying bugs relating to font support in these modern days, but it's, it's still being actively worked on. There's, uh, uh, there's not a lot of work that's gone into it in 2017. There was more in 2016, but hey, it's September. There's still three months to go. I, I really won't, I'm not going to assume that development's done for the year. Um, RxVT is also one that's been popular. It might be lighter than X term. I'm not quite certain. Never really tried to compare formally, but it's worth noting it's barely maintained. The last visible version was 2.7.10, circa 2008. And then I have a contradiction to that right underneath. Well, in RxVT, I've got an instance around here. I think what I've what I launched my other window. This is Tilix uh, that we're running this in. Uh, RxVT is, I think, my other window. MRxVT, the M is for multiple, multiple windows. It allows you to have multiple tabs so that inside the one terminal, you've got multiple terminal sessions. You can be doing different things independently, all that jazz. Now here's where it's interesting. It's based on RxVT 2.7.11, which I can't find. The notionally authoritative subversion repository doesn't have it, doesn't have that. Uh, the last time it was touched was in 2010. 
nobody's touched it in like seven years. <laughs> so I think from these three, if I would kind of say if you might want to look at X, if you like X term, don't feel embarrassed. It's still being reasonably actively developed. And if it's satisfactory for your needs, as, hey, it lets it lets you customize fonts. It lets you um, change colors, change background, uh, allows you to control what's uh, um, the the window title. There's lots of stuff that uh, X by default allows you to do with it. Don't feel bad about about picking this. Possibly. So there might be several different Okay. Yeah. Uh, the question, the comment from uh, from the crowd. I'm not sure. I know. Yeah. yeah. From Daniel, is that he's got an RxVT Unicode. It's entirely possible that there's been a fork. Um, don't know about that. And it's uh, that's interesting. If so. Now for the madness. People who remember the years of the uh, X, uh, uh, the window manager wars, Enlightenment was a window manager that was really baroquely configured. You could do all kinds of wacky things with it, and it was, it encouraged wackiness. <laughs> Terminology is an X term with crunchy Enlightenment coolness. Do you want to view your animated cat, cat GIFs in a window? Got it. You need to view your cat videos. It'll do it in line. It includes sound support. So, you, so if, they're making, if they're meowing at you plaintively, you can hear them. You want translucency so you can put a terminal in front of the cat video that you're watching. Sure. You want tabs. You want more. It's got lots. Of, it's got all this stuff. You want to split screens. Absolutely. All, and you can play cat videos all the way down. Um, and somebody has a Pokemon extension so that you can pick which Pokemon or pick one at random or ask for one at random to put it in the background. And I had that installed, I thought. And then I can't find the repository last night. So, oh well. Um, Actually, let me let me launch one of these. Um, do, do, do. Here is well, it'll appear eventually. Um, well, that's that's surprisingly boring. But look, at it's. it's uh, I'm not actually certain how you display those cat videos. <laughs> um, oh. Oh. Wow. Well, that did something. And better still, it made it crash. <laughs> cool. Well, that was special. <laughs> okay, yeah, well, I'm po oh, here's Pokemon Terminal. Uh, it lets you pick a Pokemon as your terminal background. It runs on a whole bunch of terminals. It runs on terminology. Tilex is, and see, see up there it says Tilex. This is Tilex. iTerm2 is, is a very popular, I gather, Mac OS equivalent to an Xterm. Not okay, but it's, it's, it fulfills most of the same purpose. You get to open a terminal and do stuff and put Pokemon images in the background. Yeah. So that in that way, it's, it's most importantly compatible with an extern. And it's useful things like access your password. <laughs> that's, that's actually some, that sounds useful too, yes. Terminology, well, and here's sort of interesting bit. Terminology uses VTE 
which is a video terminal emulator library, which was written for, uh, for GTK. This is going to be a common thread. I've, I've got another screen that's got quite a number of other Xterm clones. The GTK world has gone wild and created, and this, ver, ver, this video terminal emulator library allows anyone and their brother to create an Xterm with presumably minimal code and a lot of common functionality. And well, it means you can, they, can, they can put different kinds of decorations around it. Tilex is a tiling, emula uh, tiling terminal. So the notion, let's, let me do a split. Let me add a terminal on the right. So there we go. We've got, we've got in this one window, uh, we have actually two sessions. That's probably not useful. Well, it, it, actually, it is quite useful. This, this honestly, this is the purpose of it. At the moment, it's not too useful because it's a distraction from the other side. But ah, well, very useful. If yeah, or or look at two things at once. You're editing a file in one on one side while viewing uh, viewing logs in the other. I wonder if that'll work. Okay. And the the other sort of vaguely interesting thing, Tilex is written in D. Has anybody ever written D? I've never written any D. But D is a language that was, I think, popularized by Dr. Dobbs' journal once upon a time. So there's some guy. It's a, he, it's a language that's a little more sophisticated than C, a little less sophisticated than C++. So it's a little, a little easier to implement than the one. Uh, in theory, a little more powerful, a little more object-oriented. Mumble. Um, D is somewhat popular in some places. I don't know where they are. Oh, well. But Tilex seems to work, so I'm happy. Uh, and there's a newer thing. Uh, Tilda uh, uses GTK. Um, do I have a copy of that running? Uh, let's see if I can. I, I think I... Hurrah! Um, well, oh, I, it's probably more use. It would probably be more useful with a different um, um, with a different window manager, uh, with a non-tiling window manager. But it's it, it apparently pulls down like the terminal in Quake. So anybody remember Quake? Yeah. Yay! Rock's term uses VTE. It's very similar to GNOME uh, terminal. It's plenty configurable. Let's see if I'm lucky. I do not have it installed. Oh, well. Uh, GWAIC, again, is w the windows sort of look like GWAIC. Oh, I was trying this one out last night, and it was blowing up on me for some reason. Hurrah. It might pop up. If something pop up, pops up, that's cool. Um, yeah, apparently all I notice is all kinds of signals. Okay. Oh, that's cool. Um, there's terminating. Might come up, yeah. Might just take longer, yeah. Terminology. No, I don't have Terminator. Terminator is, uh, it, it again was a GTK uh, v, uh, VTE based thing. The cool thing about it was it came with some really neat shading. So by default, it's had sort of a, it has some cascaded shading of, of the, in the background. Hey, it's, 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 it, looks, it looks sort of fancy. Vala Terminal is written in Vala, which is an object-oriented language that generates C code. Um, and it was sort of created to 
make a language to make it easier to write GTK apps. So it, use, it again uses GTK and, and v, VDE, or VTE. So, uh, and I don't think, I definitely didn't do that. I didn't install that. Um, on the other hand, this one, you are, the next one you are going to love. It made some let's close that down. No. It decided to do something oh, I know what's going on. Um It'll take a minute. <laughs> and it is it is significantly configurable. And it's pretty this is pretty fun. So settings. So the screen you have a choice between various kinds of screens. So we can have amber, green, scan lines, pixelated, Apple two, um, IBM 3278 terminal, hurrah. Uh, what do we do with the scan lines? And eh, which font do we do? It's got a bunch of fonts. Does it degrade over time? <laughs> it is configurable. The amount of de degradation, well, it's, uh, it's not, it's not configurable to change over time, but how much burn in, how much bloom, how much noise, how much jitter, how much of a glow line, curvature, and all that jazz, you can tweak to your heart's content. Kill me now. And. <laughs> Yes. So. Yeah. Actually, yeah. Actually. Oh my. Yes. Yeah. Oops. And my favorite is one of them turns on your webcam to show you to have a picture of you. Okay, now, uh, okay, here's, well, it's actually, somehow this makes it better. I think this is ideal. This is just easier to read, yes. So, Hyper, and Miles pointed me to this one, Hyper is written in JavaScript. So, we've had, we've had ones in Vala and D, and I'm not sure what all else, but the hypers in JavaScript seem crazy to me, but it seems to run such as it is. And it's, it uses HTML and CSS, so this should maximize your ability to be able to have uh, kitten animations in the background on your screen. And well, and they have they have a whole theming they have a theming engine for that, and. Uh, dozens and dozens of of themes that are considered good enough to be called awesome and collected in an awesome GitHub repository for Hyper. Um, so it's it's and it, oh you can you can have the uh, the pixel can have explodey things going on so fireworks as you type. <laughs> Large dose of awesome. So that. Great, great. Now, interesting. Here's interesting, and I, I'm well. I'll launch it. I'll launch it. It'll be boring in after a fashion. It's boring after one fashion. 
And, well, that's sort of boring, well, uh, but alacrity is notionally interesting because they wrote it, uh, it's an open GL application, and they wrote it in such a way that it, well, it was, it was in Rust, so it's, it includes 50 libraries of Rust thingies. It's, it's got a fairly sizable set of dependencies, but they all download and build fairly easily. Um, and it's got Rust's, Rust's sort of uh, Graydon Hoare's um, memory safety goodness and all that sort of stuff. And it takes advantage of your graphics hardware. Unlike almost anything that you run, it's most things, well, you, you bought these computers with, with high-powered graphics cards. It actually uses the graphics card to render um, the, the text on screen. So um, Stuart apparently did some testing of this. He hit an instance of alacrity with, like, catted lots of output into it and found it was several times faster at, at catting random output than any, what, what, what mainly do you compare with? Yeah. And well, and, and there is nothing interesting to see. It has no special effects. Uh, zero special effects. It's uh, you can configure it. Uh, you have a configuration file where you configure what what font you want to use, what size you want to use, and all that jazz. The the usual sorts of things you'd want to do with a terminal. Uh, what color do what colors do I want to make use of? But it's there's not much there beyond that. But it will not impose very much load on your system. If you're opening a thousand of these, well, no, you, you only, the, the human brain can only comprehend maybe a couple dozen. Um, but this is, this is the one that was to me the most interesting because it's, uh, it's perhaps a route to something faster. And to me, that's the one possibility of better than what we, we've had so far. That's and that is that was my ninth slide and there we go. I should go over there. <laughs> yes, yes. So questions. <laughs> yes. That way we we like it if the if the questions get recorded as well. I was just just wondering what uh, technique you use to research all of these. Uh, did you just stick uh, X term in in the search engine, or did you uh, do something more sophisticated? I search the web. Uh, it's it's um, the the place where I did. I probably didn't find very many. Well, I, I sort of I found there there were some of these that uh, just came up automatically, and there were a few I were I was well aware of, and. I wasn't aware that there were quite so many uh, GTK, VTE-based terminals. There are probably some uh, QT-based terminals that I have not done justice to. But um, um, cool, the, the cool retro term is actually implemented using uh, QT. So I wouldn't consider that to be a downside. Died 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and it was it was curious to me just how many there were in the uh, in the GTK world as a fallout of them implementing a library to make it easy to do this. So there's probably more. There's there's more. There's there's more. I um, I found enough. <laughs> so. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> and I think to